What's going on, my homies? Joel Tier from the Token Minorities, and I am back with the semifinals battle of the GBA Season 9, where your Casey Girat Chiefs are taking on Randy, the coach of the Houston Team Rockets. Make sure to go check out Randy's channel. Show him some love. He'll be linked down in the description below. You'll be able to see his side of this match as well, which I would highly, highly recommend that you go take a look at. But with that said, we are diving into our semifinals matchup against one of the absolute strongest teams the strongest record throughout the course of the season and in my opinion a top two uh overall draft in this season as well so full props to randy for getting this far in the season he definitely deserves to be in this game but let's take a look at what he has decided to bring in this game he has brought the hippowdon evil tall infernape metagross clefable and the megalodias uh the Metagross or the Infernape could easily both or either of them be a uh, Z Crystal holder in this particular game. I am bringing the Groudon Mute Breloom for the first time this season, finally, and the uh, Manaphy Magearna and the Mega Aerodactyl. If you want to hear all of the details on the team that I am bringing for this week, make sure to go check out the Team Builder, which will be linked down in the description below. Uh, just to very briefly summarize my team, it is a Lumberry lead Groudon in this matchup it, with uh, Rock Tomb and Roar and Precipice Blade. Uh, and Stealth Rock. And then I have the Mew, which is a Super Fang Taunt Toxic set with Roost, just a really annoying fat Pokemon against this team. The Breloom, which is SD3, attacks with Mach Punch to help pick off some of his uh, potential win conditions in the late game. Then I have the Manaphy, which is a Dual Screens variant with Surf and U-Turn, uh, because I don't really expect him to bring remo or any Defog on his team, because his only Defoggers are the Megalodius and the Evil Tall. And then I have the Magearna, which is Choice Scarf once again, just like we brought in our first matchup against Randy. And then the Mega Aerodactyl is kind of a fat defensive set with Roost, Toxic, Ice Fang, and Earthquake just to generally be a nuisance against this team. And, you know, just looking at what he brought, that's looking pretty nice against him as well as he opted to not bring the Suicune, which is really good news, I think, for uh, for me in this matchup. He also opted to not bring the Roserade, which is key. It's huge because now I don't have to worry about Spikes. And Spikes are really annoying for Pokemon like my Magearna that want to try to switch in and pivot around his team a lot with the Choice Scarf. So the fact that he didn't bring the uh, Roserade tells me that the Metagross is certainly his response to Magearna. Very well could be Assault Vest. Just looking at Team Preview, that's kind of what I'm expecting out of the Metagross here, just because he doesn't really have any other switch-ins to, uh, to the Magearna. I think it's possible that he could try to catch me with something cheeky as well to kind of help him check the Magearna, but I think it's more likely that he's going to be a uh, Choice Scarf Infernape and maybe an Assault Vest or Specially Defensive Metagross to uh, kind of serve that role here in this game. So that's just kind of what I'm expecting at Team Preview. I'm not expecting the Megalodias to be a Reflect type variant this time around. I'm thinking it's going to be Calm Mind to attacks with Roost. Uh, Clefable could be a lot of things. I'm kind of expecting a Calm Mind variant just because Moonblast plus Flamethrower looks pretty good against my team. The uh, Hippowdon I'm expecting to be his Rocker. Evil Tall could be a variety of things. Probably Life Orbit Choice Specs if I had to guess, but we'll have to see on that. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of what I'm expecting out of this team. I'm going to lead this thing off with my, uh, with my Groudon just because it matches up well against uh, pretty much everything on his team. The only situation where I wouldn't leak Grout on here is if he brought the Roserade, which uh, is something that would have been able to force me out, in which case I would have let off with Aerodactyl. But we are going to lead off with the Grout on. We're going to go ahead and hop right on into this game, and uh, we're going to see if we can advance to the Season 9 final. So good luck to Randy, of course. Thanks to the guys who made this game possible. Uh, Sticks for genning my team for me, and AA Round 2 for 24 recording the game for me this week, and we're going to jump right on into this. As Randy is going to lead off with the Latias, probably expecting me to lead off with my Breloom in this game, but I am just going to lead off with the Groudon. This is a pretty nice opportunity to get up my Stealth Rock here as Randy is going to opt to go for the Mega Evolution, as he should, and uh, we're going to see that pop off here. We are going to get the Stealth Rock up on this turn, but we're going to first see probably what the Latias is going to do, except we don't. So I actually outspeed the Latias, which is really interesting information to have because that means he's very defensive. Okay, he could very easily be a really fat Roost Calm set on this Latias because he is that defensive that would be something that could be pretty good against a lot of the ways that I would normally try to offensively check this thing but he's just going to fire off the icy wind 
which is interesting. Uh, I'm just going to take this as an opportunity to safely switch into my Mew because I know my Mew actually outspeeds this Latias because my Groudon did, and uh, he is actually just going to go for a Defog. So we did bring the Defog in this game. Now that's something that I'm going to have to be very uh, aware of as the game progresses because that means he has a way of getting rid of my dual screens that I want to try to set with my Manaphy later on. So I need to get rid of this Latias. My Breloom is probably going to be the best way for me to be able to do that. But I am just going to fire off a Toxic here uh, just because he doesn't really have a safe switch into it. And if he goes into Evil at all, I would love to have a Toxic on that as well. So we get that off, and uh, fortunately he's just going to go for an Icy Wind that's not going to do really any damage to my Mew at all here uh, in this game. So now he's going to pull a switch back out into Harden, which is his Infernape, as I go for a Super Fang, which is really nice for me because this damage is uh, is absolutely key, okay? This damage means that he's going to be in range of a plus two Mach Punch for my Breloom later on in the game, and uh, if I can set that up with maybe getting his Latias weakened, getting his Evil Tall weakened, Breloom can very easily sweep this game, I think, behind the dual screens here if I can set it up properly. So I am just going to go into my Infernape uh, just because I'm expecting him to probably go for a U-turn or maybe a Flare Blitz on this turn as uh, that U-turn damage actually reveals that he is a choice bandit Infernape instead of Choice Scarfed. So now I have to be aware of the possibility of Banded Mach Punch as one of his ways to help him check my Magirna later on in the game as well as even the Breloom uh, later on as well. So I'll have to play with that in mind too, but I am just going to pull the switch now into my Groudon as uh, he was able to get his Hippo in against the Aerodactyl. I'm making this play because I think he's going to go for Stealth Rock, and if he's going to get Stealth Rock up, I'm going to make sure that I have my Stealth Rock up at the same time. If he wants to go for a Toxic with his Hippo here, fine by me. I am packing the Lumberry. It won't matter whatsoever. As far as I'm concerned, Concern is I am just going to go ahead and get the Stealth Rock up here as he pulls the switch into his Infernape, which uh, is kind of bad news because I know he's Choice Banded and uh, he is Stealth Rock up. Something's got to die here, but Groudon was the most expendable member of my team, uh, just even from Team Preview, which is kind of interesting to say about Groudon, but I am going to go ahead and sack it off to the Infernape and he's going to take himself down to looks like about 30% of health with, uh, with his Infernape after the Flare Blitz recoil. Now here I'm going to check Check him with my uh, Mega Aerodactyl. This will give me a good opportunity to go ahead and Mega Evolve and Roost to get myself back up to full health as Choice Banded Infernape is nothing to take lightly. I'll need to be really careful around that. Hopefully keep this thing healthy or at least alive to uh, give myself a nice way to switch into the Flare Blitzes later on in the game because I really don't want to use Manaphy for that. Uh, I'd ra much rather use Manaphy as like a check to the Infernape instead of hard switching it in because I'd like to be able to get both screens up against it if I can. So I am just going to go for the Roost as it goes into the Hippo. Now here I have a couple options. I could just go hard into my Breloom, but I don't really think it's the best time to do that. So I am just going to try to go for a Toxic as uh, I'm going to miss the Toxic as he goes for a Stone Edge and crits the Stone Edge, which is pretty frustrating because now my Aerodactyl, uh, I believe it's in range of hazards, if not really close. I'm going to try to go for another Toxic as I'm expecting the to go for an earthquake predicting my roost as I'm going to miss that one as well which also sucks um, because obviously my Aerodactyl is going to go down here as Randy is pretty uh, pretty intent on just going for the uh, Stone Edge at this point when I'm obviously just trying to go for a Stealth or go for a Toxic on the, the Hippo. Uh, so that, that really is annoying because I would have liked to have the, the Aerodactyl later on in the game to switch into stuff like his Evil Tall, which is uh, obviously really annoying in terms of offensive pressure against my team. So I'm just going to go into my Breloom now as this is a great opportunity to go ahead and set up a SD as I don't think the Hippo can possibly have the Whirlwind uh, now at this point in the game just because he's already revealed to have both Earthquake and the Stone Edge. So I am just going to bring in Breloom because it, what it should do is force in the Mega Latias as he doesn't really have any other safe switch ins to this. He could have gone into something like Metagross if he had Psychic Coverage, but I'm not necessarily expecting Psychic Coverage. It's possible, but not 100% guarantee. Uh, so I am just going to go for now the Facade as I don't think he's going to have Psychic Coverage on this thing 
either. Psychic coverage just in general is not great against my team unless you're expecting Breglum to come. So uh, with that in mind, I'm just going to be able to knock out the Latias, which is absolutely huge when it comes to my Manaphy later on in the game being able to keep up the dual screens against him. As here is going to go into his Evil Tall, I'm kind of expecting him to go for a Heat Wave on this turn. So I'm just going to pull a switch into my Manaphy Heat Wave would allow him to obviously hit my Magirna, which is otherwise the most likely switch in here. It's actually going to make a different play and go for the Oblivion Wing, which I thought was interesting. I thought Heat Wave was much more likely, uh, potentially much more beneficial to him as Magirna was a pretty easy switch in, but uh, he opted for Oblivion Wing, which works out really well for him here. I am just going to take this as a chance to set up my uh, my light screen against him as he's most likely just going to stay in. And when I have the light screen up, Braylon becomes that much more of a threat against his team. My Mew even becomes a much bigger threat against this team when I have the, the stealth rock up as well. So this is really nice. I'm just going to go for the U-turn in case he wants to try to switch out into something else. Uh, but he's obviously not going to do that. He's just going to stay in with his evil tall. And uh, my man, if he does actually reveal to, I believe, outspeed the evil tall as well. And this actually comes into play later on in the game, too, as uh, for whatever reason in my head, I didn't like register that I outsped the evil tall with my man, if he and whatnot. I was kind of thinking it was choice scarfed at this point in the game for whatever reason. <laughs> really silly at my end, but uh, for whatever reason, I really thought it was choice scarfed just based upon how he was just constantly clicking uh, the oblivion wing and, you know, it wasn't like specs damage and whatnot. So, anyway, that was just a little flub on my end, but I'm just going to go for a uh, Volt Switch with the Magirna, now expecting him to switch out into his Metagross, and that damage reveals to me that he's probably Assault Vest, but it's kind of hard to tell, uh, just because it's, you know, it's Wi-Fi, it's kind of hard to tell exactly how much percent uh, a move is doing to to uh, a Pokemon, unless you have that fancy HP bar that I wish I had. But uh, anyways, now I'm just going to pull a Switch uh, from my Mew into my Breloom. That was a, a double, I believe, expecting him to go into his... Uh, his what was it? I think I was expecting him to go into like his Hippowdon or something, and I wanted to try to get my my Breloom in uh, in that specific situation instead of my uh, instead of my Mew. I don't think it was Hippowdon. I wish I remembered exactly the thought process on that specific turn, but um, I expected him to pull a switch. That's all I remember off the top of my head. No, I remember it was I was expecting him to go for a Toxic potentially on that turn, and I wanted to see if he, if he had the Toxic, as that would help me confirm whether or not it's probably an Assault Vest variant. As if you're not Assault Vest, you probably are going to have the uh, the toxic to help him hit the the mew so that was the thought process on that turn but anyways i'm going to get in my uh magirna now on the evil tall which i'm kind of expecting is going to go for an oblivion wing again and even if he goes goes for the heat wave i have the light screen up i should be able to take the hit uh, pretty well as i now expect him to probably go into his paladin expecting me to go for a bolt switch i'm going to go for a fluor cannon which is going to get me a lot of damage off on this hippo which is really nice for other members of my team, especially this Magirna, if he's going to let me get rid of the Hippo, I'm going to be able to Bolt Switch freely on his team, uh, and I can kind of pivot around the Evil Tall Metagross combination much easier when he doesn't have the Hippo anymore. So uh, that was really good damage. Here I'm going to go into my my uh, Breloom instead of going for the kill with the Magirna because I think it's possible that he would will he be able to get a probably a kill with his Infernape if I just go for the for the damage with my Magirna, um, or at least that was the thought process in my head at the time, which in hindsight doesn't make too much sense either, but we'll, we'll revisit that later. But anyway, uh, so I am going to, let's see, he's going to pull a switch into his Hippo. I'm going to actually pull a double out of my Breloom just to see if he has, I'm going to go for the facade. <laughs> Sorry guys, a lot of these turns, I guess I'm getting jumbled up in my head, but I'm going to go for the facade, expecting him to pull a switch into the evil tall on that turn, and uh, that's he does actually just sack off the hippo, which makes sense as well. That was also, you know, I just didn't expect him to try to attack with his Metagross when I could very easily just go into my Mew on that specific turn, and I think that going to evil tall would have helped him in that specific situation. But uh, anyways, now I'm going to pull the switch back out into my Manaphy, as I don't really have a safe switch into the evil tall anymore, and uh, he's just going to go for the Oblivion Wing once again. So he's pretty set on just continuing to go for Oblivion Wing because he needs to get health back on this thing. I'm almost positive that's his uh, his thought process and it's helping him survive a lot longer in this game around the around the Stealth Rock. So uh, that's working out pretty well for him here is now he doesn't have a Volt Switch Resist anymore. So I do have the Magirna that's going to be able to continuously check this thing really well here as I am just going to go for a Bolt Switch here again uh, as, as he's going to go into his Metagross. And every little bit of damage on this I get is really nice too because quite honestly, this is the only thing that's left that I need to get weakened for my Breloom to be able to do a lot of damage here in the late game. 
Like a Fable as well would be nice, but SD uh, plus the special defense investment I have on this set should be enough, really. To help me deal with the Clefable too, so uh, I am just going to now go into my Braylum and double into the Mew to scout for the Zen Headbutt, and uh, we're going to see if he actually does have <laughs> the Zen Headbutt, so I'm glad I pulled that double, that was a much safer play. Uh, Mew is not going to be able to actually knock out the Metagross, but I'll be able to weaken it down to the point where it is going to be in range of my Breloom's Mach Punch, if not in range of Stealth Rock, if he lets me have enough turns doing this. Uh, so I'm just going to go for the Super Fang here, it'll definitely be in range of the, the Floor Cannon now as well, after probably one more, it might be in range now, but Assault Fest Metagross is pretty fat, so I wanted to try to be sure about that if I could. Uh, so I think I'm just going to go for a Roost here on this turn to get a little bit of health back, just to help me take hits from this later on if he does decide to preserve it, uh, as that could be nice. I also need this thing healthy to help me deal with the Clefable potentially if I'm not able to set up an offensive win con before the Clefable comes in. As he's just going to go for the Earthquake now against my Mew, which is a fair play that makes a lot of sense. On this turn, I believe I'm just going to go straight for the Super Fang again, expecting him to try to go into uh, maybe the Infernate, maybe the Evil Tall again, something like that. I thought he might try to make a switch, and either way, getting that damage off is good against anything on his team as uh, he's just going to go for another Earthquake here, bringing me a little bit low, forcing me into another position where I need to go for a Roost to keep myself at a, a health where I can 1v1 the uh, the Clefable later on as well. So I'm just going to go for a Roost as he opts to go into his Evil Tall. Here he is in a position where I think he has to go for a Dark Pulse, uh, which is very interesting because what we'll see here, once I get my health back from the Roost, I'm going to be just under 100% health, which gives me a chance to live the Dark Pulse from this Evil Tall based upon his investment in nature. And if I can live this hit, I do actually outspeed this can go, can go for a Toxic, which is nice, to get a little bit more damage off against this. I really don't need much more damage, though, really any more damage to put this thing in range of the, the Mach Punch here soon. But uh, even so, he is just going to go for the Dark Pulse. I do live pretty easily, and now I'm going to be able to get off probably a, uh, a uh, Super Fang against this set as well, which will all but put it in guaranteed range of the, the Stealth Rock here as well, which is exactly what I need. I need this thing to be gone. This thing is so annoying against my team. I want this thing to be gone uh, just because it's able to continuously get its health back with a broken move that is Oblivion Wing. So we are going to be able to get this thing weakened to the point where it's going to be in range of my Breloom's Mach Punch as well as obviously in range of my Magirna's anything. Uh, so this is what I was looking for. This is actually a potential game winning right game game winning situation right here because I can just lock into the Flash Cannon right now and if he doesn't have a buttload of priority, this should be able to clean sweep through the rest of his team. Infernape is really weakened. It's in range of plus one Flash Cannon. The uh, the Metagross is definitely in range of the Flash Cannon, and all he has left besides that is the Clefable, so that'll definitely die to Flash Cannon, I would assume, as he's going to go into the uh, Metagross here, so probably just going to go for a Bullet Punch, but uh, that's not the play that he makes, so that, that surprised me. I'm not really sure what he clicked on that turn, and maybe he doesn't, didn't have Bullet Punch, I'm not sure, but uh, He's just going to go down here to the, the Flash Cannon, so that's that's nice. That's looking pretty good. And now he's going to go into the Cliff Fable, and uh, which this is not going to appreciate the Flash Cannon whatsoever. This should just straight die, even if it's a Babiri Berry. Babiri Berry it should go down here on this turn. The Flash Cannon is going to come out, and it's going to live. So it's a Sashed Cliff Fable, and that's a little scary, but I still have my Breloom in the back. And Breloom is packing exactly what it needs to be able to clean up the rest of this game here. If uh, so, McGearn is obviously going to go down. Breloom's going to be able to come in now. And uh, we'll see if Breloom can clutch up this game and see if we can bring in the Casey Drachis to the finals. As I'm actually going to be outsped because I don't click the <laughs> Mach Punch, I click SD. <laughs> and Breloom's going to die. <clears throat> and that's going to be the game. So. Let's talk about this a little bit here, because that was bad. <laughs> that was really bad. So the thought process in my head at the time was that the Infernape was still at about 50% of health. In my head, I forgot, I straight up forgot, that it had taken a bunch of recoil from taking out my Groudon earlier on in the game. And that came into play <laughs> in that specific situation, even though... For whatever reason, I remembered that it was going to be in range of Flash Cannon from Magirna. But when it came to Breloom, when it came to Breloom, 
I did not think about that in the moment. I thought it was at about 50% of health, maybe 40% after Stealth Rock, which would not have been in range of my Mach Punch as I am not a Technician Breloom. I thought I needed an SD to be able to knock the thing out. And so I went for an SD when in reality, if I just went for two straight Mach Punches, this was our game to win. The Infernape was not going to knock me out with a Banded Mach Punch. Going to outspeed Clefable, obviously, with the Mach Punch. Props to him for running a fast Clefable. Like, fast Clefable is in addition to my blatant choke. That's what it is, a blatant choke. In addition to that, like, uh, the fast Clefable was able to kind of secure him the, the win in that situation. But, man, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> can't believe it. Kind of beat myself up over it, not going to lie. Um, so, you know, I'm sorry, guys. I, I'm sorry I screwed up. And it, I guess it happens. I, it might take me a while to get over that, but um, that's that's how it goes down for our last game of the season. We had a, a really solid run throughout the throughout the entire season and a very abrupt ending. Losing like that is not fun, and it's not not acceptable. Honestly, that's so bad. <clears throat> Yeah. Anyway, I'm not going to ramble on about it too much now just because it is really irritating to even think about. Like, that's that's how the game ended. And, you know, what I want to say, though, is great game to Randy. Okay, don't at all show him any hate for that for how that game ended. That is not his fault. Okay, not his fault at all. That is entirely my fault. Yes, I, I should have won that game based upon the moves that I had on my team. I should have won that end game, but I didn't because I messed up. Not his fault. That's my fault. Show him some love in the comments below because he is going on to the finals. He's going to be taking on the winner of Lars and Leo uh, from, from the other conference. So I hope you guys will still go check out that game and see how it all plays out. Uh, great game to Randy. He played really well. His season has been phenomenal. Uh, and, you know, someone who had the best record in the regular season honestly deserve, deserves a chance at the finals as well. And I've been in many situations personally, too, where I've had the best record in the regular season and didn't have a shot at the, uh, at the finals. And, you know, it's, it sucks when that happens. So, you know, it's props to him for being able to, to get there here this season. And good luck to him, of course, in the, in the finals as well, as uh, really any of, the, any of the possible champions this season, the GBA will definitely have earned it uh, based upon how, how strong the drafts are in the top four and just the, the strength of, of the player as well. Uh, it's all, all four of the semifinalists really earned their positions, I think, in this season. So, um, yeah, like I said, I'm not going to go into too much detail on this. Obviously, I messed up. And like I fully admit, that's on me, totally on me. And you know, I'm sorry to you guys who were who were counting on me to try to try to win this uh, this game. Just not what happened. Um, man, it was another. <laughs> what also is really frustrating about this. I'm not. I know I said I'm not going to talk about this too much, and I'm not going to talk about that because that's just whatever. But Braylon. <laughs> Braylon, man, it's always Braylon when it comes to these crazy losses from from me in playoffs. It's always Braylon, which I mean, it's not Braylon's fault. This is my fault again. But <laughs> if I just click mock punch twice, I win. So, ah, uh, yeah, not a whole lot else to say on that. I I guess question of the day uh, is just going to be kind of more general. Uh, what do you guys think was the the best draft? this season of the GBA, um, and you don't have to say mine. I would expect many of you wouldn't say mine because I don't think it was the best, but it was pretty solid. It was, it was definitely fun to use. I think there were some that were a little bit better. In fact, I think Randy's and Leo's, two of the semifinals, were the two strongest drafts this season uh, from from the start, honestly, they just had a lot of a lot of threats and utility to work with on their on the drafts. Really tough to, to prep for, I would imagine. In the case of Leo, definitely for Randy, both times I tried. Um, but uh, yeah, let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Uh, I guess more generally, let me know what you thought about the season in the comments below. Uh, again, I'm really sorry, guys. That's it's bad. This was a really bad loss, and uh, it'll take some time to get over. I'm not gonna lie, it'll take some time to get over. Uh, this is this is one of those that's going to be kind of pretty high up on the list in terms of like games that I feel like I just totally butchered. You know, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to choke an endgame that badly. It's hard. But, you know, if it was on Showdown, I would have seen the, 
the percentage on the on the Inferno than obviously would have flicked the mock punch twice, but on Wi-Fi, you know, it's it's hard to keep track of that stuff, I guess, and it just slipped my mind at the worst possible times. So uh, yeah, unfortunately, this is going to be the end of our season. Hope you enjoyed our run throughout this season. It was kind of fun to use a bunch of Ubers. It was fun to finally get a chance to use Magearna. It really lived up to the hype in my eyes. A really, really, really good Pokemon. The best fairy I've ever used in draft format above Tapu Koko. Uh, it's it's so good, so good. Groudon was a blast to use as well. Uh, the one week I had Zekrom early on was kind of cool too. I'm definitely glad I made the swap out because Zekrom was much more boring than Groudon. Uh, Groudon was just able to be a much bigger offensive threat uh, the entire season as well as being solid defensively. Uh, so if you have your own Ubers leagues, I definitely recommend giving Pokemon like Groudon a try. Uh, it's it's definitely solid, and I can't believe it didn't go drafted <laughs> originally this, this season. So uh, really lucky to be able to pick that up in free agency, and I think Groudon's a large reason why we had the, the record that we did. Uh, now finishing the season 9-3 and three with, I believe, a plus probably like plus 20 differential something like that for the for the total season which you know it's it's hard to hard to complain about that but i can't help but feel like we we could have gone a lot farther this season and i felt confident about finals if we had made it there too and just wasn't meant to be this season but anyways we're going to go ahead and wrap this up thanks for watching guys thank you so much for all of the support this season it really means a lot i've seen consistent viewership consistent comments from several of you uh down below really grateful for all of that uh, you know, you guys are what keeps me doing this kind of thing, because otherwise I have a lot of stuff going on in uh, other aspects of my life. So, uh, yeah, I just really appreciate all of the support this season and last season. Just the overall GBA support entirely has been really cool to see. Uh, so, really grateful for that as well. But, um, yeah, that's about all I have to say. Make sure to go check out the finals. That'll be coming up here in a week or two. And, uh, yeah, show Randy some love on his video too. But with all that said, guys, thank you once again, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.